Welcome to Tone Talk. Welcome to Tone Talk. Welcome to Tone Talk. Oh, Dash Radio, Voice of Reason. This is going to be a good show. This is going to be a real good show. We on YouTube as well. Please use the super chat. It's going to be coming on live on YouTube in a second. Um, use the super chat. Join the discussion. Please, please support this channel. This is probably one of the last shows I'm going to have here at Dash Radio at this studio. Um, you know, they're going to be closing because they're going to be remodeling and reopening um, here in Hollywood. But I want to make sure that I give y'all a chance to speak on some things because we had a discussion this week. Um, we talked about Revolt TV and uh, Revolt Summit. Shout out to Killer Mike. Just talked to him today. Um, and we also did a great show on Mixed Dish, you know, um, and essentially talked about the impact and the problems with Tracy Silberstein, Tracy Ellis Ross, um, coming out with this show, but not giving any kind of context on the reality of race and wealth in America. You know, let's talk about it today. One of the things that I want to do today is I want to give everybody a chance to actually call in earlier than usual. I want to give people a chance to speak on this thing. Uh, so look, I hear Revolt Talk coming to LA. Tell them if, if they come to LA and they invite Tom, Tom will come on the stage, but I ain't, I ain't tampering anything down. I ain't on there. I ain't here to be adversarial, but I'm going to tell y'all the truth about everything. Everything. I try to do this show because I want to inform black America about the condition of black folks in America. I believe in many ways before Tone Talk Show, before ADOS, before Breaking Brown, before the political awakening of, of, of black America, particularly millennial black America, we largely lived in a, a lull of a false belief that black folks had done made it. I'm not here to tell y'all that black folks can't make it. But I am here to tell you that we ain't made it. And I'm gonna tell you how we can. A black agenda, reparations and everything of the sort. We gonna be in uh, Louisville, October 4th and 5th, the ADOS conference sold out. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy. Y'all know we, we got the schedule coming out. Shout out, Dr. Cornell West gonna be there. I gotta go on and tell you. Understand that we gonna have Marianne Williamson. I'm gonna do a Q and A with her presidential candidate talking about reparations we gonna have congressmen we gonna, that do budgets nationally we gonna have the mayor of the city we gonna have dr kevin cosby and of course the the wonderful yvette carnell we gonna be there at the ados conference making it happen but let's get right into the tv the, the i mean the show today let's get right into it the show is revolt tv and mixed dish what is really going on it's a, it's basically I'm not going to talk as much as, as I, I, I have because I gave y'all my opinions. Go watch those videos. Don't watch them down. But really what I want to do is lay out the questions, give y'all a chance to call in so you can tell me what your thoughts are based on my show already. I'm opening the lines to everybody from Tracy Ellis Ross to Sean Diddy Combs to Jay Morrison. Anybody can call in. Anybody can call in and give their opinions on how they feel about how everything goes down. But especially to the ADOS people out there, the, the black allies out there, the white folks out there that want to talk and give questions to me and also the audience about what's going on with this. Let me lay out the questions, but before I do that, Dash Radio, Voice of Reason Radio, we hear five questions. Number one, what was the result of the Revolt TV Summit? Is there a call to action? Number two, what was it T.I. was saying about a flag and a... a Constitution and the UNC as a requirement for reparations and did it make sense? Number three, is black celebrity blocking or helping with black politics? We gotta talk about it. I told y'all about the decadent veil. I think y'all see it a little clearer now. I think y'all kind of understand what I'm saying now. That black America is in a stupor. That black America don't understand what need to happen next. And I'm telling you that there's something going on. There's something amiss. Number four, why is Mixed Dish? This is the new show on ABC about Rainbow from Blackish. Y'all know I showed on my on my on my on my shorter show that while Roseanne was in a hundred and thirty thousand dollar realistic white house and white folk house in the middle of Evansville, Indiana, that's still worth one hundred thirty thousand dollars today. Shannon Dungey, the ABC executive at the time, said black folks 
white folks need, hold on, black folks and white folks need a version of black folks that fills up what's called wish fulfillment TV. That's what she called it. So what they gave us is a black couple in blackish that live in a $3 million house. I'll tell you this, he's an ad executive and she's like a regular doctor. They got three kids going to private school. They like to buy goods. I don't know how she, how this all makes sense, but the house is worth $3 million. Then that's not enough. They gonna give us a show called Mixed Dish and tell us that, that mixed people are the ones that are the victims because they gotta be judged for their identity. I'm gonna talk about it from data. I, that's what I did on my, uh, on my show. I told y'all that we can get past the policing blackness and let the data tell us what the policing blackness actually is. Let's talk about it today. Number five, number five. Do biracials like Ellis Ross and Peel, I'm talking about Jordan Peel, allow white America to escape the need to reckon with race? You got Ellis Ross running around here with grills in her mouth, buffooning black folks. I don't know where that came from. Look, I ain't from the deep south. I'm not finna do whatever they do down there. At the same time, I come from South Central LA. Black folks. Same thing goes with with uh, with Jordan Peele. This is a man who grew up with his white mama. Distant, I don't know how, I don't even know how, if he knew the black father, but I know it's distant, the relationship. How you doing this racist show, Key and Peele? The show was racist, let's call it what it is. We wouldn't let a white man do all that buffooning. It was horrible, awful, that show. Too bad that, you know, if Tone Talks was on, if Ados was around, we would have put the gate up. We would have we would have locked in on that show. But they lucky they slid through before Tone Talks came. Shh. We here to talk about it today. Now, don't call Black, I saw somebody say Huxtables 2.0. It's worse than that. It's a whole bunch of junk. It's like junk. I'm not saying, you know, I had my critiques of the Cosby show. But that, at least that was sound TV, made some people better husbands and better wives. I don't know what blackish she is. Her, she rainbow, running around, berating her husband. He crazy and scattered. The kids is wild. Don't make no sense. The show don't make no sense. Let's talk about this show today. 323-230-4610. I want to hear from you a little earlier today. And I want to hear about your opinions on this Revolt TV Summit mixed dish and what's going on. So let's let's get right into the first thing. Let me say this. I do recognize that there has been an attempt by black celebrity, by Puff Daddy, by T.I. to walk over to a black political space. But I don't know if they understand the sacrifice that has to be made, the identity change that needs to take part, the learning of lessons that needs to happen, because in many ways, I understand the, the desire to have a revolt TV summit, but what we meeting about? What is the black agenda we meeting about? You know, when you come down to the ADOS conference, we got some calls to action at the end of the conference, or at least on the end of Saturday, y'all gonna hear. When you come down to the ADOS conference, we're gonna have a congressman that does the budget, the head of the budgets, the, the congressman in, in the US Congress that's the head of the budgets. You come down to the ADOS conference, you will hear a presidential candidate that brought reparations to the stage, to the debate stage in a real way for the first time possibly in American history, talk to me on stage. When you come down to the ADOS conference, you gonna hear a black agenda that leads to black progress, not just speculation about maybe, maybe, maybe we should do this. No, we need to do these specific things. That's what we need to be talking about. But when I look over at the Revolt Summit, my problem, and hopefully maybe I can help them change that a little bit, is that we didn't get no answers. We got a lot of speculation that was kind of scattered like missing targets. But we didn't get no answers. Maybe somebody that calls in can give me the call to action. Let's take the first call of the night. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, I'm calling from Chicago. So, so let, talk to me. Uh, what do you think about the Revolt TV Summit? And was there a call to action? Um, yeah, well, first of all, I want to say, Tom, man, um, thank you for putting me on with all, with all this information. I had no idea before. I had no idea. I, I have, I'm, I'm hooked to, uh, and I had no idea. I mean, I'm delusional thinking I'm doing this all by myself, but what, but what you made me realize that I wasn't, and I actually gave my mom and dad more credit, more love than I've ever gave them. And I actually looked at my entire family different thinking because I was thinking they should be pulling themselves up and now I realize. So brother, I just want to say thank you. Man. Let me say I'm this. Hold on, board. hold on, brother. Let me say this. That's what we gotta be able to have. 
Uh, we ain't a lot of us, you know, we don't know this. We don't know that because we wasn't exposed. You know, when right. I went to South Africa, I had to shut the hell up. I had to shut up mm -hmm. and listen to what they got going on because it's a whole different place. I don't know what's going on here. I can't talk about America in South Africa. So mm -hmm. I'm saying this to you, brother. We all go to spaces where we got to listen and learn. And I feel That's like right. I respect you for at least listening. Can you explain one more time? We kinda, You kind of said it fast about your parents, something you said. Oh, no, I just gave them, I'm sorry, man. I just gave them, you know, I gave them a lot of love, man. I just gave them a lot of love, a lot of thank yous. Uh, I mean, my attitude towards them is different. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I'm just looking back at what their history and just, you know, and, 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 and then I'm looking at my entire family because to some degree I was like looking at them like y'all should pull y'all selves up. Bootstrap. But you know, yeah, boot, bootstrap. But when I'm looking at them, you know, when I look at them, some of them got, the, you know, fathers jail and all the rest of this other stuff that happened and i got both my both my parents and they were able to get a house and help me along the way but to some degree i kind of was thinking i did most of it myself and by looking at what you and yvette carnell doing and reading reading on aes 101 doc you know uh talking the points and everything i started to realize damn it ain't me it, it hasn't been me it's been them let me ask you and this I, Let, let's get more sure. specific tell me what you okay. thought about this revolt summit what i what i thought about it honestly um being educated you know here with you first and looking at looking at everything and then looking at what they're talking about, I thought it was a bunch of shit. I thought it was just a, a bunch of, I don't know, pomp and circumstance, uh, just a bunch of hoo-ha because most of the people that, you know, they have a bigger audience, so they are misleading a lot of people onto something as serious as reparations. This is, like, really serious. Let me say shout-out to Nikki Joe Blair. Thank you for your bottle money. If you, <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I'm going to take it in the ADOS way and say, Thank you for your bottle money. Go ahead. That's in the <laughs> chat. Everybody in the chat know what I'm talking about. Look, let me say this. I want to say I talked to, T to Killer Mike today, and all I can say is whatever y'all feel is how y'all feel without knowing the man, I respect that he tries to take this knowledge into different rooms that it ain't been in before. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying we got to take it step by step because, like I said on, on the regular show, it's a lot of concrete that was put up. You know, we, I just got to, through interviewing and Yvette got through interviewing and Dr. Cosby with the New York Times covering the ADOS conference. I'm wondering what they're going to say, though. I'm wondering what they're going to say about this conference. This conference about black folks in America saying we black folks in America. Now, right. I look at the Revolt TV Summit, and, and I think one of the things that has to happen is they need a little tone talks. They need a little ADOS. They need a little breaking brown. Because all of those things lead us to a greater and broader discussion about what is the call to action. What is going to be our black agenda? Reparations. Who does it go to and what is the amount? I said this on my show. I said, look, we, we, we can clean up H.R. 40 with three things just to start. And this will, one, we want an apology at execution. Number two, number two, it goes to American descendants of slavery. Using Sandy Darity's criteria, I personally would like to add a, a double nodding for biracials so that we um, can fix a loophole that I see. But okay. that's number one, number two. And number three is probably the most important. At execution, if we get that far, that means we got past Congress. That means that we got it on the president's desk and we got it signed. That means, look, you don't want to get that far and then have to go through it again. At execution, we need 1% of, of 10 trillion or 10% of 10, 10 trillion released. And we, don't, we can set it up where over the first six months we decide how that money is going to start being distributed, but we need a good faith effort. We need either $100 billion at the lowest or a trillion dollars to be released at execution so that we can start disseminating this. Otherwise, it ain't real. That's how you do it. So... I'm talking to you because these are the calls to action that I start to see are missing in the politics today. And I say to you, man, brother, it starts at the home. It moves to the local level. It moves up to the state level. Then it goes to the national level. That's the way this works. But if you don't got your home life right, ain't nothing else going to be right. Anything else you want to say on this Revolt TV Summit? Um, well, not, not, not particularly on that, but like, um, just the talking points you just said about, um, the local level, you know, I'm going to, I'm getting to the point where I want to do my part. I want to have workshops with, uh, about ADOS and, um, and also, you know, uh, last thing I just wanted to say is, you know, we got civil rights. We got that push through. We got, we got through segregation. We got through a whole bunch of stuff to get us to this point. There's no way we can fail at this because our, our ancestors did it with less and we have more 
all we just got to do is get this, this follow your lead, man, and, and, and push and push and push everybody and move forward. Man, thank you so much. Woo, we online. Caller, what's your name? Where you calling from? Turn your background down. What's your name? Where you calling from? My name is Bam. I'm from Tennessee. What up, Bam? Look, Bam, you gonna walk on? you gonna walk through this with me because you down there, you down there in the South. Come on. Yeah. What was T I saying about a flag and the constitution and the UN seat as a requirement for reparations? I sat back and thought, he got to be going somewhere with this. And what I realized is he's thinking about us going to the UN. That's what he was talking. He's thinking that we talking about taking our reparations claim to the United Nations. That's not what reparations we in our country. See, the CARICOM is a is a is a mix of Caribbeans trying to take their claim to the UN. They need to do some of that, all of that. I don't know how much of that. We're very different. We are actually in the American country, one country that owes the debt. What me? What Yvette Carnell, what Dr. Kevin Cosby, what Sandy Darity, the leading intergenerational economist on this in the nation are talking about is creating the energy that pressures Congress, that pressures the president, that pressures the presidential debates, the kind of energy that ADOS already showed is more than possible. They keep calling us small, but they keep talking about us. And so what I say to you is we don't need no constitution because the constitution, the U.S. Constitution is ours. Look at the 14th Amendment. We made that happen. We don't need no flag because that flag, that flag that got the red, white, and blue, that's our flag. Let me say this. We don't need no seat at the U.N. because the U.S. seat is our seat. So I say this because I don't know how he got there where he thought we going to go to the U.N. to get the UN to tell America to give us reparations when we already in America. Talk to me. Okay, okay. So I want to take it a step back because I thought the Revolt TV Summit was a good thing. Yeah. And the reason I think that is because the subliminal messaging was there. Killer Mike actually led me to you through mm -hmm. that Revolt Summit. I don't know much about politics. I am interested in getting involved locally, city council, boards, and stuff like that. But I, I, what I'm what I'm not understanding, but I, what I think you just broke down for me is how do we actually how do we actually execute the black agenda that you want us to put forth for reparations? Is it a, a Dr. King like style of us just coming together and then marching on Washington, or do we need representation in the White House that's going to execute that for us? Let me say this: we got some we got some real things happening at the ADOS conference to explain some of that. But one of the things we got to have is an awakening. We got to have an awakening of the black soul, the black political soul, because for too long, it's been cloaked up and clouded and not understanding that you can't money your way out of this. You can't entrepreneur your way, your, your way out of this. You can't you can't pray your way out of this. You're going to have to do the political work. Now, the political work starts before you get to the ballot box. The political work starts before you go to your Urban League meeting. The, the political work starts the moment you wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, who am I and what do I stand for? So I say this to you because right now what's happening is black folks don't even know who they stand for. And so that's what ADOS does. It reorients American descendants of slavery to understand America owes you, your family, because your family bled a specific debt. Now, until that debt is paid, that is our concern because too many of us live under America. So I, I guess I start with the political education. I start with that in the, in the mode of Fred Hampton. I, I think we have to begin to understand who we are and what we stand for. Now, after we do that, and maybe at the same time, that's what I'm doing. We start to make demands of politicians. Now, the problem is if you don't got the first step right, it's a bunch of people out here trying to confuse things. You got in Cobra saying reparations is for all Africans in America. I don't know what they talking about. They got they, they saying it's for all Africans and it's xenophobic to say it's for the descendants of slavery. It's tied to lineage to people. You had a lady that was quoted in the Washington Post. Washington Post did an article on ADOS and didn't interview me. I don't know how you do that. And they quoted a lady from in Cobra and she said that. Well, you can just experience the legacy of slavery if you, even if you don't have a descendant of American slavery in, in America. What? And so I, I, I say this, I guess, I hope I answered you. We got to have a political 
dialogue amongst each other. And that's what we do weekly here. Now we take that and we do a conference and we demand the presidential candidates. If they don't come, they got to hear from us on the ballot box. And we'll talk about how we going to make that happen at the conference. So anything else you wanted to say on, on, on the, on the, Revo tell me something positive you took away from the revolt conference. Something positive that I took away from it was, was, you know, checking out tone talks. I mean, you know, he, he name dropped appropriately in response to, to the narrative of, you know, when America was great, when he went into the whole civil war, uh, uh post civil war, what, what is it? The reconstruction era, right? He was speaking like that was when America was great, which I don't particularly agree with that, but I thought it was a good talking point, especially for folks like me who are kind of ignorant when it comes to a lot of these political, these political subjects. Um, but but one thing I do want to say just before I get out of here, man, I do appreciate the work that you're doing. Toxic ambition and, and your talk and videos about black love and wealth, that was really eye-opening. So, you know, just keep doing the work. I'm going to stay tuned in, and hopefully you keep teaching. That's all I can do, Tennessee out there. Shout out. So, look, man, let me take another caller. I'm trying to take as many callers as possible. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Tom, this is Mike from Georgia. What up, Mike? Long-term caller. I got the South in here. So, look, tell me what you thought about what T.I. said. Because, I, I, you know, I'm not trying to down the brother, but we're not trying to go to the U.N. Did You know, what you take away? Well, Tony, I, I want to kind of, you know, touch on what you just spoke to the previous caller about. You know, with, with Adolf, there's this muscle that we have not exercised for generations. And that muscle is being understanding who we are and taking that understanding and, and understanding that we built the richest country in the world. That is nothing to be ashamed of. That is something to be proud of. But to be proud of it also is to make this country recognize it and be responsible for what it has done to the descendants of those people that built this country. There is a debt that is owed. This is not something that should be taken lightly. And it, it feels like black celebrity wants to use this as talking points to advance their next album or their next movie or, or, their ne or the conference that they want to attend where they can fleece black America and charge them out, outrageous rates to attend the we conference. Got, we got to be fake. We got to be real. Look, the ADOS conference, I gave away, look, I, I gave away like, about 150 seats i i get that because i was i was like i just want people to come i wasn't trying to make people i knew that would people would come then we went up to 15 dollars. that's not a conference price that's not even like that's not the price to cover the security and the uh, actual venue and every that's not a conference price but we know we dealing with ados people and we want to make sure that after you pay for your ticket and your and your um, room that you at least have a good time and it don't cost you a bunch the Revolt TV Summit was charging a hundred and some dollars a day, and then they were also for a VIP package charging five hundred. I gotta say that's extremely high. Now they can say their audience is bigger than black folks, but if you look in that 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 audience pool, it's black folk. It's black folks out there trying to learn, trying to learn something. And I can't understand how we gonna charge people to learn so much. We got Boyce with the classes, we got Jay Morrison with the uh schools and stuff. I'm saying to you today, I take y'all to school and I don't charge nothing. I ask for donations. Y'all donate what you can to keep the channel rolling. I'm saying to you today that we got to move to a point where we challenge everybody. Civil Rights Act of 1866, first Civil Rights Act being heard November 13th. One of my, one of my critiques of the summit was that what you effectively have is a summit that it comes out of the memorandum. The revolt station was given to Puffy out of the memorandum of understanding of 2010 and essentially you have Comcast using that as cover to avoid the very discussion that we're having at the Supreme Court level now, which is that black folks want to own themselves. They want to own their message and their identity. And I, I don't know how that mixes. I don't know if it can mix. That's a question that everybody got to ask themselves, but I, it's, it, you know, it's, it's something else. Um, any last thing you want to say to the audience? Cause I'm going to move over to this is black. Well, let me ask you one last question. Let you answer this is black celebrity blocking or helping black politics. Well, of course, it, it, it's, it's standing in the way. It's standing in the way because there is what you just said, that there's an identity crisis that's going on with, within black America. And ADO, ADO, ADOS is trying to cure that identity crisis and let you know who you are. So that, that battle that you talk about is at your house, 
it, it's, it's actually you. It's actually the battle that you have to fight with yourself every day to understand I'm AOS. This is what I'm owed. This is what I deserve. I deserve a good home. I deserve a good job. My family deserves to live in a nice neighborhood. Why? Because you are American. Come no on. other reason. You are American. Man, thank you so much for calling. Let me take another caller. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? L.A. Hey, what's up, L.A.? You know you're in my hometown. Let me look, look, look. Um, I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. I'm, I'm going on to this mixedish. They got this show mixedish coming on the air on ABC. Tracy Ellis Ross then weaseled her way into making this show something real. Now I watched the trailer and I don't understand. Is the mixed people supposed to be in the middle and black folks is on one side pressuring them and white folks on the other? That really recreates what race is in America. It makes it seem like black folks got a lot of power that they misusing. When we look at the numbers, when we look at the history, we know that's different. We know white folks have 90% of the wealth. We have three, 2.6. 3 trillion in black hands, 100 trillion in white hands. Now, my discussion on this is that there's two pots. There's two pots. There's the pot with 3 trillion. And we know when we look at the deciles, 10% of black families have 2.25 of the 3 trillion. So there's one pot with 3 trillion. There's another pot with $100 trillion in it. Understand this point. If you're biracial, what ends up happening is you got one hand in each pot. You got one hand in each pot. You put both together, pull out whatever you can, and put it and eat it into, in, in your face. What Inheritance. Your mama can make phone calls for you to get you into school. She got social networks. Your grandparents leave you inheritance. You just need one hand in that, in that other pot, though. Black folks that are ADOS, that are full ADOS, because we're both ADOS. If you have one black ADOS parent, you're an ADOS person. But people that are ADOS with both hands in the black pot, we pulling out nothing. And what's happening right now is that white folks that don't have no black friends, they are choosing someone who has a white parent as their one black friend to reflect back a positive image of what white folks have done to black folks. But all it's reflecting is the fact that people with one hand in the white privilege pot can live a good life. I don't know how this show going to go, but I'm telling you my feeling is that black folks do a little wrong and white folks do a little wrong. And in the middle is mixed people. What you think? Give me your take. Yes. Um, I totally agree with you. However, Tom, um, I never watched the show Blackish or the new show. Mm -hmm. I don't even have cable. I don't get it. Because of that percentage of where we're at, um, I I totally agree in regards of um, you know us as black people don't have um, money and funds. Now I'm not an ADOS, but I super support um, the cause. Thank you. And what? But what I because I was born in Belize, but I've been out here since. And the reason why I know that what you're saying is so correct is because the dating, the dating status for me dating. So I could, I could see, I have friends, you know, and I did have this white home girl and, or friend per se, and, um, she could get a job faster and I just saw it, you know? So I definitely agree with that. Um, um, also in regards of, um, them, Putting you on that show, I seen the the show. I don't I don't remember the name. I was trying to write down some notes. Talking about the Revolt, Revolt TV. But, however, you talking about Revolt yes. TV? Go ahead. Re Revolt TV, exactly. Um, in regards of that show, you will totally be a good candidate. So that's all I really wanted to say. Um, I didn't get enough notes. I should have watched more of the more of um your broadcast. However, that's all I need to say. I totally agree in regards of us and and where we are as a people. Thank you. So look, look, look I appreciate the support. That's what I'm talking about. Allies calling in. Uh, no way am I saying that I'm xenophobic. I, I don't believe it. the ADOS people in large are actually saying xenophobic messages. My apologies for those people that, that do. You know, it's a it's a lineage. People are gonna say what they say. But our group largely is 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 pushing for reparations. But if you believe that reparations for American descendants of slavery in America, the country that actually did this and never paid the debt is xenophobic, then I don't know. You need to self-evaluate. 
Because I don't believe that that Haitians should not get paid by the French. I don't believe that the Jamaicans should not get paid by the English. I believe those countries should be made whole. That's their fight. But I say in America, this country, I, I, you can come here in 96 or 90, whenever you came, in America, what you find is that we're owed a debt. You know, there's a new new book come out came out. I haven't read it yet, so I can't recommend it, but you might want to pick it up. Immigration and the Remaking of Black America. Don't too much like that title because I don't think America, black America has been remade. I think by the numbers, we still understand that black America is rooted in ADOS. But the, 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 the data is what I want to share with you. According to the U.S. Census data, 98,000 black immigrants resided in the United States in the 30s. This number dropped to 84,000, 85,000 in the 40s. We're talking about millions of people and it was that low. This idea that black immigrants have been here like the entirety of American history, it's a lie. It's just a lie. You know, Joy Ann Reed talked about them going back and forth on the boats. That never happened. Sandy Darity said it. I'm just saying you got to know what you're talking about if you're talking. Now, after 1980 and Reagan, so black immigrants came in large number with Reagan. Reagan's policies changed that. You saw a boost in the number of black immigrants to where now we have a good sum. But they came here 88 and 95, and you can ask them, different years. Way after, like, civil rights, though. I'm just telling you what happened. I mean, there was a, a number that came about 800,000 between 65 and, and 80. But then after 80 is the large number where you get to millions. Think about that to come to America like Barack did after 1980 or even after 1990. I'm just saying. So let's get back to this, this whole concept of, of the biracial mixed dish. I want to make sure I have everybody understand what I'm saying. Understand that. There's a white pot and a black pot. The white pot has been created from the, the failures and the, and the dust and ashes of the black pot by the oppression of the black pot. The white pot created a crust cream group that skins the outside of, of the inner pot, black pot that actually hoards even the little bit that's inside of the black pot. So three million, three, three trillion dollars is in the black pot. 20 million families. Two million of the families are the crust that are inside of the black pot. 18 million families live on the rest of it, the 775 billion that's left. That's not enough. The top 10% of that 18 million, 1.8 million families, they have half of the 775 billion. Still, those are all boomer retirees. The bottom, after that group, that rest of that group is living on 300, 300 billion dollars, which is nothing. I, I have no idea how this group actually has created an identity that they have middle class. We know the numbers. Middle black family worth seventeen hundred dollars uh, across this country. Boston eight dollars liquid. Uh, Miami eleven dollars liquid. Los Angeles uh, two hundred dollars liquid. We know the numbers. Thirty five thousand dollars is the middle black salary for two people across this country. Income house income. The white pot has a hundred trillion dollars. Again, 323-230-4610, Dash Radio, Voice of Reason Radio. The white pot has $100 trillion. Now, 10% has, they have their crust group, but it's fat crust. That 10% that's in the pot, that's the crust in, inside, the, they have 75 trillion of the 100, 8 million white families. There's 83 million white families. So there's 83 million white families, 20 million black. We got to understand this to understand how ignorant mixed dish is. It requires you not to know what I'm about to, what I'm telling you. Understand that the next 8 million white families still have another 11 trillion. So, and then there's still 15 trillion after that for the rest of the group. So they have wealth throughout. They have classes throughout. What I'm saying to you now is that if you are white and have a college educated white parent, if, if you are biracial and have a college educated white parent, in this America, the, the gap between those two people is not as wide as, it ever, as it's been before. We have moved, what I argue, from a one-drop rule that makes you black and, and contaminated to a lineage loophole model where essentially one white parent can give you the access to white privilege just like a white, folk, white person. Barack Obama, classic example, he inherited 450,000, 500,000 liquid from his white grandmama. That's, um, I, I, that's off the charts for black 
That's like top 0.1% in terms of wealth inheritance for black folk. Like, it's off the chart. It don't even register. For white folks, it's probably top few percentile. That's how high that is. In liquid money, I, I think that, you know, top 5%, something is high. It's high. Top 10%, top 5%. All I'm, all I'm saying to you is this. We got to understand when people got one hand in each pot. We got to understand Tracy Ellis Ross, and she got an elite. Her hand is on the crusp of the black pot and then in the white pot on the good part. And she want to make a show talking about how we judge her. You got Jordan Peele, who really didn't know the black father, right? That's what we know. So he got, so he's a biracial making a racist show. That Key and Peele show, go back and watch it. It was racist. He got two hands in the white pot because he was only knew his single mama, really. So how are you talking to for black folk? Somebody would say, you're policing blackness. No, I'm just looking at the data telling you that you don't get to make a show about the ghetto. Make a show about cat, a cat that's a gangbanger. Whatever he did, that weird show. That weird movie he did. Let's talk. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Sinatra calling from Atlanta. Yeah, give me your take on everything. Sure. So I'm listening right now. Uh, perhaps I'm stepping out of the room. I'm a little behind on the stream. I want to speak on the mixed thing. First off, I want to say I praise to the most you, Tom. What you're doing is clear the spirit of Yah is upon you, and what you're doing is not going to stop until you complete what you're here to do. And it's a, it's a great benefit to the people. Uh, what I want to speak on is what you're speaking on concerning the reparations talk at the panel. Uh, when T.I. mentioned what he said about the nationality, I think that we should consider what he's actually saying, simply because if we don't identify who we are as a people, it's going to be difficult for the government to actually give us anything, even though we're owed that. It's going to be difficult if we don't know who we are as a people. If we just say we're Americans, then even European Americans can lay claim to reparations. That's not, but see that, that's, that, to you, that's what I mean. I, how long have you been watching my show? Uh, that'll help. Uh, for, a few, for a few years. Okay, so, so then you know about the criteria that goes into ADOS. Then you know that. I do. What I'm and saying to you, what I, Anderson as well. Okay, so so what we what we what we're talking about is exactly that. That's not what what Ti was talking about goes beyond that into some foray of creating a country. He's talking about going to the UN. I think that what you're talking about, I agree with, because it makes no sense to get reparations if it's gonna go to all the blacks and all the whites. That's what, but that's what all Bernie and, and Elizabeth Warren are talking about. They're talking about right. look the 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 baby bonds thing. And, and Sandy Derry has repeatedly said it's not reparations. I don't know why they keep talking about it in context of reparations. But the baby bonds thing, it's, it, you're going to basically give poor white babies some form of reparations before you give black children and black adults that are suffering because they are ADOS. That don't make totally no sense. Great. So I it agree with no you. I just, don't, I, I just have to say I don't know if that's what T.I. was saying because what T.I. was saying as I look back at it, was basically more about making an argument about going to the UN and making a claim for them to actually claim against the U.S. and it doesn't make any sense. Call. Let me take another caller. I appreciate you calling. Thank you. Woo! We on. I'm trying to take as many callers as, as I can. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Cavi Stone. I'm calling from Dallas, Texas. What up, man? What you think about this thing? Let me ask you something. Okay. Look, do biracials like Tracy Ellis Ross and Jordan Peele allow white America to escape the need to reckon with race. So you, you don't got no black friends. You just get you a black friend that's a biracial that got a white mama or, or like Jordan Peele that don't even know his black side. So you got a black friend, but he don't, he don't really, it's not just that he don't represent black people. Let's stop with that. He is rooted in being a white person. Let me start off by saying, I, I've always said this. We American, I don't have no issue with somebody dating somebody white. Let me also say that somebody that has a biracial that's white and ADOS is still ADOS. What I'm talking about is using that, that person as cover when they're a reflection of white wealth, meaning there's no way that you should take that show and, and get some kind of concept, meaning this mixture show, of what black folks live like. There's no way you should take Tracy Ellis Ross and Jordan Peele and elevate them as a narrative of what black folks live like in Tennessee and Georgia and Texas. And Let me talk to well, you. Well, you can't, you, you, you can't take too, many, too much of any of the shows and the TV that they put on television and movies that represent the black family uh, as the way that black people are actually really living. It's all, you know, that's what Hollywood and, and that's what they're doing. You know, and I, I think that one thing that we need to deal with 
and a lot of things that we may be dealing with as ADOS and our families is dealing with people who are actually married to uh, white uh, people, and they, you know, and the way our families are divided sometimes, where even sometimes the family members don't want to deal with the racial issues or talk about it or abandon the black families and the division that's coming because they're married to white people or they got mixed children and they don't want to expose them to the realities of what's happening. I think that uh, the black family just got to stand together, and I think that that, that don't give you a, a ticket to uh, try to shelter your, your, your uh, mixed children from the realities of really what's happening in America. And also that what you're saying, uh, uh, the show mixed it and using that, as well in these type of imagery that they're putting uh, and controlling our image. It's a major problem. Let me jump in here. Erica Kane asked about what about biracials and other races? Kamala Harris is a classic example. To me, Kamala is an Indian woman, you know, and I, I, she might be Indian Jamaican to some people. What she isn't is Ados. She's rooted in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Indian mother. That's who raised her. Her aunt says it. Her aunt says everything that Kamala is because of her mother. When she gives her stories, you actually find out she's an Indian woman. I'm not saying nothing wrong with being Indian, but you don't get to be an Indian woman and then because you went to Howard, all of a sudden talk about my mama's story. <laughs> and I'm saying to you, I'm saying, I'm saying that I believe that in a lot of ways we've been allowing people to be two things and take away us being anything. So let me explain. So Kamala gets to be uh, Indian, Jamaican, and then she also gets to be what we call, created called African-American. And then not give any kind of like full on debt or commitment to um, African American identity that it needs to survive. I'm saying this while she actually pushes forth policy to make sure that Indians have H1 have visas to be here. She knows how to commit to them, but when it comes to like JB, um, and I might cut a clip in here so you can see it. Excuse us, sir. Senator Harris, Senator Harris, what about reparations? What about reparations, Senator Harris? Senator Harris, Senator Harris, Senator Harris what about reparations? What about reparations? Senator Harris. When JB approaches Kamala, this is my, this is somebody that's ADOS, that's, that's basically approached Kamala on reparations more than once. She got a nasty demeanor towards him, a nasty demeanor, mm -hmm. the kind of demeanor where she don't deserve one ADOS vote. You look right. at how Butter Gig, how O'Rourke, how even Elizabeth Warren, how they responded is at least with some level of respect. Kamala Harris didn't like that man. That's the way it came off for asking. Him. Actually, if you watch the clip, the second clip, she watched past. She done already seen him. She mad because she got him a month before. Um, and, and so she look, she doesn't even make eye contact. When she gets in the car, she screams at him, what about your home ownership? We're not talking about home ownership until you talk about giving us what you owe us. Right, right. It's usually, it's usually the black and the people who are trying to identify as black people that are the ones that are treating black people like that, real Native American-born black people. The white people, as far as buddy gig and thinking that they're showing us some level of respect, uh, they're they're acting evasive as they always have. That's what white society is doing. So I don't respect what they're doing either. And so it's, it's it's all a big sham in order to basically take advantage of African Americans as usual. Let me say this. Let me say this. Like it's funny because a lot of people will mix in a voluntary immigrant group, and it, that's what these a lot of black immigrants are. And ask the question about minute groups. You know, like the 80,000 that were here in 1940, they came here on their own, though. They were not, they did not descend from slavery. Sandy Derry is very clear on his criteria, and I support it entirely. You must have went through slavery. You must have an ancestor that went through slavery in America and Jim Crow. Not either. We're not here for it. We putting the gate up. Oh, yeah. We talking today. And I'm saying yeah, to you. Can, if you can bring. Uh-huh. And I'm saying to you, essentially, what's happening is that black folks ain't ready for that discussion. Caller, let me try to get a couple more people in here. Thank you so much for calling. Okay, thank you. 
Look, Lawrence, what's up? This is Tom. I seen your call. I appreciate you calling in. I want. I know you want to break in here. Tell me what you think. Yes, sir. Oh man, uh, look, Tom. Let me just put it like this. My name is Max Victor. Your your background and is a little loud, man. I want to make yeah, sure. Yeah, let me step outside. Can you hear me now? Yeah, a little better. Okay, perfect. My name is Max Chick, man, and I'm from Los Angeles. And you know, born and raised. I listen to the show often, and man, I I, I don't want to cut in. I wanted to talk to you guys about how everybody right now, and I'm a I'm a political scientist. So my major thing right now for who is how every pulling for I'm what sorry? you pulling for what I, I'm a political scientist. Okay. And so my major thing right now is how everybody's coming up with these bills. Everybody got a proposal for everything. I mean, yesterday, I don't know if you saw that, but um, uh, uh, what Bernie Sanders put out a new plan for what he called housing for all. And he's going to be spending $2.5 trillion Come on. on building all these, uh, uh, basically what I'm calling ghettos, because that's what it is because you're going to be taking the lower bottom of the people in the lowest income bracket and putting them all into these apartments. You get what I'm saying? And so I'm with I, you. Let me, let me jump in here. Let me jump in here. You see in yes. every plan, you know, Elizabeth's housing plan is place-based. So gentrifiers are going to get it all. Uh, Kamala's plan yeah. is a watered down version of Elizabeth Warren's plan. My speech, I'm going to break some of this down in the ADOS conference. Y'all better be ready. Yeah. Understand this, even the education thing that Bernie's doing, that's a big safety net for white folk. Um, we only exactly. went to school. Ados went to school at a fifteen percent rate. How are you gonna exactly. when you forgive all that debt? Who is gonna get all that money? That's all you gotta ask exactly. yourself. It's not gonna be Ados people that are suffering. It's gonna be white people all of a sudden getting a, a, another windfall. Obama already gave them one with quantitative easing. The grandmas and the, and the, and the uh, aunties they got all kind of money in the retirement stock money went up. Yes. But in yes. addition, what this is gonna do is they gonna get a windfall of money and then pour that back in the economy, and we ain't gonna have enough, and we can't compete with that new money in the economy, and we shut out even further. That plan will shut you out further. Go ahead. Exactly. The education plan. Expect for you the to be able to accept that trickle down economics bull crap. That's bull crap. You dig what I'm saying? Well, well part, part of it is that Angela Rye doing that special. You know, she she got up there talking about her mama and her daddy and how her daddy lost his business and and as a result she had to pay for school and I don't yeah. understand and and none of it makes any sense that I got to actually come on man you don't now, understand, you don't know the data Go Look ahead. honestly I watched that revolt summit and it sickened me you dig what I'm saying and I was going to do a video about it but you already you said everything that I was going to say and on everything, I, I respect that Killer Mike dropped your name and everything. But I'm like, okay, if we're voting for Bernie, if you want us to vote for Bernie Killer, then I'm going to need you to go to Bernie and tell him, since you're dropping all these these plans, I'm not voting for Bernie until he comes with an economic plan, a reparations plan for black folk. That's period. That's just where I come from. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and give my vote to anybody no more. I voted for Obama the first time. I couldn't in good conscience vote for Obama the second time after understanding what he had not done. I voted, you know let, let me say this about, you know, I don't have no problem telling everybody. I, I used the down ballot strategy both, both times. I knew Obama wasn't going to do nothing for black folks in 08. I voted down ballot. <laughs> I voted down ballot Democrat. That's what I did both in 08 and 12. I, I didn't know what black people were talking about with a guy that's half Kenyan and half white, but y'all found out that he wasn't going to do nothing. I guess y'all loved uh, the pictures. I remember people, I remember being at the inaugurate, uh, the, the wherever, you, when you win, he won the election night. Oh, yeah. And black folks was, oh, I, I went to somebody's house. I was like, crying. And I, 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 crying. I, I was like, he, I was, you know, I said, he ain't going to do nothing for black folks. And everybody was looking at me like I was negative. Then we here now, and he didn't do nothing but destroy black wealth. And everybody's now looking at Tone Talk saying, you must know something else. Look, Carla, thank you so much. i with you. Go ahead. Can I, can I just say this real quick, man, with uh, the, the, just real quick with this Obama situation, when I found out that David Geffen actually convinced him to run. I, I, I thought he wasn't going to do there's that. A, there's a whole article. There's a whole article about how Citibank chose his cabinet. Thank you so much, exactly. Carla. Exactly. Let me take one last call. I want to take a lady. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Bree from LA. What up, Bree? Tell me anything you want in, in uh, give me a minute and a half. I'm wide open. Yeah. Anything. 
Okay, cool. Um, I just got to say, um, I think that we really just need to kill black celebrity. We got to change the whole way that we view celebrity. And I feel like so many of us are so firm at our social your phone, your phone line going in and out, oh, Bree. Go ahead. I think you might be in a bad area. Hello? Ah, we lost her. She made a good, she was making a good point. I had, I had to drop her. Let me say this. Let me say this. I feel like what's going on is a reckoning. You know, this is, this is a, a moment where black folks is starting to look around. One of the things that I don't have no problem in telling nobody I told Killer Mike is, this whole platform stuff changes everything. You know, I did a video for my house, and I think it's at 50-something thousand views. That's a small cable show. You know, I'm not saying no disrespect, but I don't need to go on revolt, but I don't mind going on to teach the world, teach America. But I don't know how much, it don't really help me, my brand, or anything like that. All I get to do is just make sure that everybody gets the right information in the multiple ways. I'm saying this to you because I feel like in a lot of ways we're not getting honest. We got Tracy Ellis Ross, who grew up, I believe, in Beverly Hills, wearing grills like people from the Deep South. That what is you? What is this lady doing? Y'all can see it on the internet. She just be doing stuff, running around. Now she running around trying to do this mixed show, and I don't even understand what they talking about. Look at the the trailer. You got Mariah Carey singing about identity, and get out of here with this. You got then you then you got Jordan Peele. Like I said, I, I, that Key and Peele show can get up out of here with it. Did it make you have a laugh once in a while? I only watched like two of them or four of them or something. And yeah, you laugh once. But like at, overall, it was a racist show. So was the cat movie and all that. I'm saying this because these, these people are being allowed to recreate a narrative of America that never happened. Now, the Revolt Summit, you know, I commend them for trying. But I still wonder if a platform built out of the Memorandum of Understanding that was set up to avoid full 100% black ownership of channels can actually be where we talk about a black agenda. That's for all of us to ask ourselves. But I think for, for me today, all I can say is that what I saw needs much more tone talks, much more ADOS, and a lot less Candace Owens. I'm saying this because black folks need an awakening. We need somebody to touch our political soul. We need an ADOS conference that makes us understand that we are ADOS again that we are owed a debt in this country and we ain't moving till we get it. We need an ability to understand what do we do next? What is our voting strategy gonna be? How are we gonna take back our civil rights organizations? What are we gonna do going forward? How can I feed my kids if they ain't giving me enough to feed my kids? I think in a lot of instances, we don't wanna talk about that. We don't wanna talk about tone talks talking. We don't want to talk about what it means to have three trillion dollars in wealth and the bottom the bottom half having nearly nothing. This is where we're at. Let me see if I can get Bree in here to finish our point. Bree, you there? Hey, just I'm back. My bad. All right, just finish your point. I'll give you one minute because I'm about to go yeah. off the line. Yeah, real quick. Um, what I was saying was we got to kill black celebrity. I feel like so many of us we have the wrong perception of. Of, of what celebrity is. We got to realize celebrities are not people who worked hard. Do you know how much selling out you have to do to become a, a celebrity? All the, all the awful grimy things you have to do to get there. And it's just like, we just have this big perception like, oh, celebrities work hard. We should listen to them. No, if you listen to rappers, you listen to actors, you should only listen to them for what they do. When it comes to anything outside of your craft, we should not be valuing their opinion, period. That's Thank all you. I got to say. Thank you. So, you know, Dash Radio, Voice of Reason Radio, Dash Radio is going to be closing. I think it's going to be my last show here for a while. I'll still be coming to you doing lives. Um, I'll try to do it at the same time, around the same time still. But uh, I, I might use tweets as a way to get some of your questions and things until I figure out what we're going to do with the phone lines, whether I use a new studio. I'll figure all that out. But we're going to keep doing the show. Um, Dash, you know, we got the ADOS conference October 4th and 5th. Shout out to Killer Mike. Shout out to Yvette Carnell and Breaking Brown. Most of all, shout out to you, uh, my black allies, ADOS people, my white folks that are watching, to America at large, because it's time to have a reckoning and a discussion about race in a way that we haven't in a long time. Thank you.